Mary Jane, last time we caught up with you, obviously it was at the Water Rats gig yeah. uh, you played towards the end of last year. Yep. Um, you just uh, you just released your uh, EP Protect Me yep. uh, at the time, uh, and you've obviously had a fantastic response. How's that felt for yourself? Yeah, it was great, man. It was nice to actually finally get get something out, you know, music wise, and um, see people's responses to it directly directly to it. So no, it was great. Um, it's just exciting to see something you've been working on for so long actually get out there. Right? So that was cool. Okay. And obviously on the back of that, you, you supported Noel Gallagher at Brixton, uh, at Brixton Academy. It must yeah. have been amazing. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, it was just such an honour to be asked, obviously, <laughs> by the man himself. So it was, um, what, it was what, insane. What yeah. was it like playing that gig? Uh, pretty intimidating because obviously his crowd's pretty. You know, it's very much a Noel crowd. But um, but it was great. I mean, I had we had a great time, and um, Noel was at the side of the stage the whole time, which was. Obviously, obviously, more pretty intimidating. So uh, yeah, but it was all good fun. Man. We had a lot, we had a lot of fun. And, and what's Noel like himself? Uh, he's a lovely man. Yeah, he's he's just he's very humble and he's very he's uh no, yeah, it's, it's it's just weird hanging out with him because he's he's so, he's just so nice and he's just like oh you know he's such a great guitar player he's such a great voice I'm like you're a great guitar player you're like you're like what the hell? this is weird man like you know it was crazy but um yeah he's just I have so much respect for him. So. I'm waiting James! <laughs> so I love the kind of bluesy soul riffs that come through in his music. Um, I think he's a really talented guy. He's really, he's just got the best voice, isn't he? Like, I don't know, we were kind of like deciding to pick all the bands who we wanted to play and like, like kind of, he, he stood out the most really. He's got that cool kind of raspy voice. You've, you've been recording your new album? Yeah, um, that's all done. Yeah, uh, uh, custom to the floor. It's is that actually right? just changed to in the city. Oh, okay. Yeah, newsflash. Okay. Yeah. Why, why in the city? Because uh, it's it's hopefully the lead single off the record, and um, it's just a song that I love. And a lot of my albums was either written in London or New York, and the city where it's been either of those two has been a massive part of my career already. You know, so so yeah, it just seems to fit. You know. Okay, and and obviously uh, you you said you just finished the album. Yeah. Uh, do we have a release date yet? Yeah, that? July. Hopefully, with a bit of luck. Okay. Yeah, we've got like a few singles to come out. I think you know it sort of comes out in May and June, July, and then we'll, we'll hopefully it'll come out finally, and we'll see what the world thinks. What, what's it like? What's the what's the feeling like? Uh, and now you've got that terror. album. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like it's pretty nuts. Um, it's been such a long wait, obviously, to put this record out. So. I'm just incredibly excited, uh, petrified at the same time. Yeah. And how many tracks are there on the album? Uh, Eleven. And all new? Yeah, all brand new. Yeah, so no one's really heard them. I mean, he's got the voice of like a 40-year-old black guy, but you, I know it's just this white guy with blonde hair, and it's amazing. It'll be massive, massive in two months, two months before his album even comes out. I've never seen him live, so I'm really excited about seeing him. So you recorded the album in the States as well as in the UK. Yeah. But why, why did you decide to record? Um, a lot of the writing process was done in New York, um, just because there were, there were guys like uh, like Truth and Soul and a woman called Nikki Holland who I wrote a lot of the album with, who I just had a great connection with. She's just, she used to be in Tears for Fears and she's just an amazing pianist and um, just musically unbelievable. She just takes takes a song to a whole other level that I don't even understand what's going on. I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, play that chord, that sounds good, you know, like go to like any, I'm like, hey great, just do it, you know, it just works amazing with her, so okay. I'll be writing with her for a long time. <laughs> Fantastic, and obviously uh, in terms of production, who, who produced the album? A guy called Dan Grek, okay. who's, uh, he's just the vaccines and he's working with Keen, and uh, he's, he's just a great guy, he just gets an amazing sound and just understands music. What did he bring to the record? Um, yeah, just a, like a total understanding of where I wanted to take it, sort of an overall, um, you know, he's not, he's not like, he's not musical, he's, he's very much like, he hears stuff that I just can't even figure out what's going on, I'm just like, okay. Like he sort of all messed with different bass amps for like six hours, and I'm like, it all sounds the same to me. But you know, he really, really, really cares about that stuff, which is great. It's exactly what you want in a produ an executive producer and a, and a producer on all levels of, of the record, of taking it from the demos to, to the record. I got through my GCSEs listening to Murray. He got me through that difficult time of exams. I had my first girlfriend. I broke up with her listening to Murray. He's been one of my best friends for my entire life. Everything he does gets me through the difficult times in life. His voice, his ass. <laughs> So what 
can we expect from Murray James's debut album? Uh, you know, it's it's soul music, but it's you know I listen to a lot of hip hop, I listen to a lot of you know sort of blues and, and reggae. I just it's just modern soul, man. You know, that's that's what it is. Hopefully, you know, just songs that I believe in and love, and um, I put everything into it for the past six six years. So um, I just hope that comes through and. That's what you can hope for, really, is do, do everything you can. And obviously, in, in terms of the first single, have you chosen the first single, lead single yet? We have, yeah. I'm hoping it's going to... It's a bit of a weird situation, because obviously the label's kind of just choosing it, but um, I, if I'm allowed to say, I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's hopefully going to be in the city. OK. Which would, uh, which would be great. So. Why have you chosen that song? Uh, it's just... It's, to be honest with you, it's kind of been the foundation of what I've done as a musician for a long time. I wrote that song about three years ago when I was in a really sort of, you know, pretty crappy place, and... Since I sort of went back to it, it was just in terms of musical direction, it was like that was always sort of the, the, the starting point of where the rest of the album would go. And the other songs that I've written after that song have been very much like, you know, that that was the foundation of it. You know, so so it kind of announces the yeah, the album. you know, it's kind of it's kind of a good introduction to what I do as a musician and as a singer. And um, yeah. Okay. And, and obviously, uh, you're, you're signed to, to Elton John's management team. Yeah. Uh, has he given you any tips or advice? Uh, yeah, he's been he's been amazing. He gave me a piano, which was pretty crazy when I first signed to him two years ago, which was just nuts. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's like not every day that that happens. Um, he's just he's just trying to like, you know keep my mind straight and keep grounded and just take whatever whatever happens really and. Just, has he he just loves the record. I mean, he played it to Elvis Costello, who said some ridiculous things and. He played it to everyone, he spoke to Raphael Sadiq and he just, he's just he's just nuts about it, like really loves the record, so um it's just nuts. And obviously in in terms of uh, in terms of working with Elton, is there a chance that you might work with Elton in the future? Oh man, I mean I'd I'd obviously love to at some point. Um it just depends on what happens, you know. Yeah, definitely. He's an he's an incredible man, so yeah. Are you are you a big soul fan yourself, soul yeah, music? Uh, soul music, yeah, yeah, that's my life, yeah, totally. Uh, were you aware Etta James passed away today? Yes, I god I was, I tweeted about it, it was a it was terrible, man. I mean, she's um her voice is just unreal. Yeah, yeah I, I saw I just can't believe when you hear it, you're like, ah, it can't be, it can't be real. You know? So I remember listening to that, those songs when I was when I was really young. And it was just, yeah. Can we can we expect to, to hear a tribute maybe to her tonight? Uh, not tonight, but uh, I'd love to do a tribute at some point. That'd be great, actually. It's a good idea. Ray James is amazing. His voice was gravelly and sexy and amazing and smooth and it just captivated everyone. And everyone wanted to dance and yeah, it was really good. Great, great voice, great fantastic voice. voice. Yeah, yeah, we were dancing and listening to Murray James and we thought he was amazing. Yeah, it was very unique. Um, we loved his yeah, voice. His voice is really good. Never pick it out as a British sound because yes. it, it just it just felt right for everyone. You know, everyone loved it. There were there were Americans that loved it. There were British people that loved it. It was it was really good. Wink Bolt.